Today we're gonna pick the best individual shots from ATP players and we're gonna put them together and we're gonna build the perfect player to beat the big four every single time. Hey guys, this is Guy from MyTennis HQ and I'm really excited about today's video. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so this week I was scrolling down through some of your comments, especially in the CC Paz video analysis I did a few weeks ago. And I saw people requesting a lot of a video analysis from players like Berrettini, TM, and some old school guys like Fernando Gonzalez, Davino Nobandian. And um, I just came up with this idea, I thought it would be pretty cool uh, to you know, pick out individual shots from players, from ATP players, um, the guys who have the best weapons like you know, a great forehand, great backhand, and pick out the single best one and combine them together into one player and come up with a guy that would beat the big four every single time. Um, originally, I was thinking of, you know, just picking the best player out there in every single category, but I realized like Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, they would be in every category. And essentially I would just come up with the mix of the four of them, but I thought it would be more fun to pick out these different players and then put them together and, you know, come up with somebody who I think would eventually beat the big four and would be the number one player in the world. So full disclosure, I am going to keep players who played before the year 2000 out of this analysis because just because, you know, I was too young, didn't really get to witness those guys because I know people are going to say, oh, but Edberg has had the, the most amazing volleys and um, you know all these guys Bjorn Borg was so fast but uh, I didn't really watch these guys playing so I feel like it wouldn't be fair for me to um, to throw them in there because mate I would probably not know what exactly what I'm talking about I have watched them play in the past but you know I'm not super familiar with them and I think we do have some of the biggest weapons um, coming out after the year 2000 and I definitely watched those guys play a lot and I think we'll just we'll be good just analyzing them. So also on a side note, just wanted to give a shout out to Alvin who said my backhand is a really nice backhand. I uh, usually don't get that a lot. I know Career gets it all the time, but uh, I don't. So I really appreciate that, Alvin. I also wanted to point out that I'll be picking individual tools. So like for instance, when it comes to volleys, I know Sampras had one of the best ga net games of all time, but I think a lot of that was because he had such an excellent serve and a ridiculously amazing overhead. But And his volleys were indeed great, but he had just such an overall game that his net presence was very intimidating. But I do not necessarily think he had, you know, the best volley out there. So just wanted to um, point that out so people are not complaining that I didn't keep Sampras in the volley category, for instance. So this is how this is going to work. I'm gonna pick the top three players who, in my opinion, have the best serve, return, forehand, backhand, volleys, slice, grit, movement, and hands. And then I'm gonna pick who, in my opinion, has the best tool out there. So let's just jump right into it. Out of these three, the one who, in my opinion, had the best serve out there is has to be Andy Roddick. I know Isner has a ridiculous amount of aces, um, but I think this is just, I mean, credited to his height, obviously, um, and he has the power. He can reach angles that Roddick couldn't. Um, and Curious has a great serve, and whenever he, I mean, pushes the on button, he can serve like an absolute animal. But I think Roddick had the most consistent serve. And come on, you gotta give credit to the guy. He was 
not that tall and he could just I absolutely blast that serve. So in terms of serve, I'm gonna have to go with Andy Roddick. Out of these three, I gotta go with Agassi. That guy was just an absolute return machine. I mean, I think Nelbondian had a chance when it comes to it because the guy could just pop winners out of nowhere. Um, Coria was actually, he's the number one um, player with the most breaks, breaks of serve on the ATP, but I just think that Agassi um, was at the end of the day a better returner because he was playing um, in hard courts while Coria was playing um, on clay courts mostly, and Agassi could just step in and just distribute the ball uh, like the serves were nothing. So Andrew Agassi would be my f number one pick for returns. For the forehand, I would have to go with Fernando Gonzalez. If you ever watched that guy play, you know that he could pop that ball. The guy had a bazooka in his forehand. And I know Del Potro, he has that great forehand on the run that, I mean, people just cannot return, even Nadal. Um, James Blake had a really powerful forehand, but I think Gonzalez had not only the most powerful forehand, but he could also change it up a lot more. He could, you know, hit angles, hit top spin shots, um, inside out, inside in. So he's definitely my number one pick for it. Oh, such a nice break in the single hand. Chopin with these sorts of. On the backhand side, um, we have two one-handed players, Guga and Varinka, who had the most beautiful one-handed backhands I've ever seen. Uh, Guga is my countryman, so um, shout out to him, but I think I would have to go with Nobondian. Uh, Karu is going to like this because his backhand looks just like Nobondian's, but I think that guy had the best back and he could just do whatever he wanted. Um, he could hit angles, which can be um, quite difficult for two-handers. He could hit down the lines. He could just take the pace of his opponent. I think there was just so much, there was just so much talent in Nobondian. And I mean, you can see the guy beat um, Novak, Roger, and Rafa in the same tournament. That is not a small feat. So um, he would be my back and pick. That was just uh, such a beauty to watch. That is just magical. Oh, he's made it. What a backhand from Feli Lopez. I mean, that return was 
pretty special as well. This has got to be shot of the tournament so far. He comes up with that. In terms of slice, it's pretty weird to um, have a top three slice players and not include Federer, but um, for the purposes of this video, I would have to pick Alexander Dolgopolov. That guy was a nutcase. He played such an, an orthodox game, but his slice was out of this world. Um, I watched some clips of him um, playing in Wimbledon, and it was just insane, and he could you know, come up with shots out of nowhere. Granted, it was not the most predictable and consistent slice, but I would say that he had the most potential when it came to slicing. For volleys, I gotta go with Pat Rafter. Um, that guy was just, I didn't get to watch him that much, but um, his net game was just so solid. His volleys were so good, so deep and so consistent. And I just really appreciate that. I think he's, I think Lodra had great hands, but I think just Rafter overall, he had the best volleys out there. Athleticism of Paradorn Sichapan. Forced wide of the backhand court by David Ferrer, Sichapan then faces a return from wide of the other side of the court. Athleticism, speed, and flexibility. Um, I think those are all encompassed in the same category. And I mean, credit to Paradorn and Shrishapan, I think he made the top 10 um, a lot based on his, his athleticism. And Dimitrov can hit some impressive shots as well, but I gotta go with Gael Monfils. The guy is just, I mean, his body is just built for sports. Uh, the guy can hit the ball extremely hard, but he can also move like, I have never seen nobody move before. And if he just pushed harder, he could have um, had better results. But so I think if a player with Gael Monfils movement would be able to beat um, the big four. In terms of hands, I'm including not only the skill drop shots, but how much they can execute different shots. Um, it's not just about hitting pretty shots, but in terms of effectiveness and, and come up with, with shots that require reflex, require quick thinking. So this might be a little bit controversial, but I would actually go with Dustin Brown over Marcelo Rios. I know Rios had probably the most 
um, talent out of every tennis player that's ever lived. Um, the guy just didn't uh, reach his full potential, but I do think that Dustin Brown, he doesn't really play hard. I think he's just out there to have fun and the guy can come up with amazing shots and, and when things go well, uh, he can, I mean, he beat Nadal in Wimbledon and that's just a, a great example of his potential. Um, I know hands by themselves don't win matches alone, but I think I would have to go with him. And he's got the first point. Jumps into that return. High tension. Look out. This is trouble. He'll get it. And he does. And Nicholas Massou. Down. from here and lastly it would be the grit category and in that sense i putting together you know hard work i'm putting together just like how tough um the player is how kind of nasty they are in terms of competing the guy that you just know they're not going to give you anything and also how resilient they are um so i would actually i mean i have tremendous admiration for david ferrer um, I also think Nicolas Massieu <laughs> reached the top 10 with not that much potential, so that's credit to him, but I gotta go with Leighton Hewitt. Um, he is one of my all-time favorites, and I think that guy was just a tough competitor, uh, and he did amazing things as a tennis player. This is my perfect player, and I put together the pictures of all these players, and this is what they would look like and I made a little short video so you can see what that player, um, the perfect player would look like in an actual match and this is the player that would beat the big four. that's it let me know what you thought of this video uh, let me know if you wish we would make more videos like that i would love to hear you guys' comments uh, if you don't agree with me let me know i know there are several people who are going to have different opinions but uh, let us know in the comments i want to see what you have to say and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this